Alrighty, the Austrians are back and we are battling again. We're one and one in the series so far, I'm trying to take a lead here and ooh, I opened a mana drain. So it is myself, Troll Ascetic and Mac, a great squad battle against Adrian, Max Capone and Hate Picks Only. Some good dudes, I have gotten to know them a little better as we've been chatting and drafting and uh, yeah, it's been fun battles, I, I love challenges. So I'm gonna take mana drain Adrian might take either Channel or maybe Pyrokinesis, leaving Troll Ascetic to take, I don't know, a removal spell or something. Maybe Spellseeker if Thassa's Oracle comes back. Not the best pack besides the Mana Drain. I guess the Channel's probably number two by a decent margin. And, oh, pretty big downgrade in this pack. There's nothing good here. Um, so if I wanted to stay blue, I could take... Trinket Mage. There's Tireless Tracker if I think that I want to cut the Channel Drafter. Not that I think Adrian necessarily takes Channel. If your Channel's a pretty narrow card, so if your first pick doesn't go well with Channel, like, I don't know, you took a cheap red card or whatever, white card, you could not take it. But there's just nothing that good in this pack. I don't think Brexian Metamorph is great. I think it's just okay. So I, I think I'm going to take Tireless Tracker. There's also Trumpet and Carnosaur. It's actually pretty good to channel into, and I do like blue-red. Or Mana Drain into is what I meant. But Mana Drain is really good in green decks as well, so let's just take that. Now there's a Time Twister. There's also a Frantic Search, an Iteration, Rafelos, Zurin Orb, Leovold. There's some good cards here. I'm going to take Time Twister. I think Time Twister is a really strong card, and it's really it works really nicely with Drain. And it's good in blue-green, though. I'm certainly far from locked into blue-green. So... This leaves Adrian taking, it's kind of hard to tell, maybe like an Overgrown Tomb, maybe Rafelos, I, I don't know, maybe Leovold, potentially Frantic Search, I suppose. Uh, apologies there. <laughs> we had a problem in our HVAC room and the plumber has to like redo some pipes, so there's going to be a little bit of background noise, I, I hope you understand. Um, and Troll Ascetic is probably on like a Leovold sort of deal, I don't know, he likes the the mid-range decks. Oh, love Preordain. So I'm just going to slam that. Not feeling too committed to the tracker. Now passing double black card, double black card, underground C. But that, that's not too bad. I haven't passed much black so far. There is a Basalt Monolith. And remember, there's a Kinnon. So it could that could come back. People could take like C, Voidwalker, him, Adanto Vanguard for the white aggro player, maybe Duretti. But I'm, I'm pretty happy taking a Preordain here. Getting past Time Twister, then Preordain third and fourth. That's something. Not seeing a ton of good white. Haven't seen a lot of good white cards. And haven't seen a lot of good red cards either, so that's something to keep in mind. Oh, okay. Well, there's an Oko here. I was gonna I was gonna say Birds is pretty good with these cards, and then I was gonna debate Vendillion Click, but then I saw the Oko. Don't love passing Kozilek after passing Channel, and from the Catacombs is also a really strong card. But this was just had to have been a great pack. If there's an Oko fifth with Birds, Aragorn, Kozilek from the Catacombs still in the pack. And there's like Thief of Sanity, B-Click. This is just a, yeah, stacked pack. But I'm going to take Oko here. And I, if Adrian took Channel, he's taking Kozilek. If not, he could maybe take like a Birds, a Thief from the Catacombs. Like it's kind of hard to put him on a specific thing at that point. It's a late Underworld Breach. I do like that card, but I don't like it in a six-player draft that much. I'm also looking at either Guy's Cradle or Olvenwold Oddity. I mean, Time Twister aside, this looks like a good oddity start because I've got two good threes, Mana Drain and Preordain, and you could just draft like a blue-green tempo deck. I don't... I just don't like taking Underworld Breach that much, so I don't think I'm going to do that. Guy's Cradle can be good, certainly. I think it's a more powerful card than oddity. I don't know. I'm going to take the Cradle, but I'm really unsure about it. All right, so Pyrokinesis came back. So did Spellseeker and Oracle and Outland Liberator and Hwatli. Hwatli's pretty nice, but I have two threes already. I might just take Outland Liberator, have a good two. There's also just taking Spellseeker to go with Preordain and Mana Drain. But I think Outland Liberator is actually quite good. Okay, Kinnon came back. So did Titania and Terra Sunder, Metamorph, Mana Confluence. I mean, this, is, this was another good pack. Also, green seems pretty open here. I think I might take Kinnon. And if Basalt Monolith comes back, that's pretty nice. It's also pretty good in like kind of cradle decks. I don't have a start for Titania. And I think Metamorph is just, like I said, just okay. Though I guess the Zurin Orb here 
It was an argument for Titania. But now I can just take Leovold and Leo, Leovold Twister is awesome. So, plus Leovold, I think, is the best card in the pack. So Basalt Monolith didn't come back. I think I might just hate the Dothy Voidwalker because it's the best card. Not very likely to be running it myself, but I don't really care for Psy. I just don't really... I think all these cards are a lot weaker, so I'll just take the Voidwalker, even though I don't know how likely it is that Adrian's actually playing that. So I really could use some one-drop creatures. I could also potentially go in a different direction. I mean, Tireless Tracker, Leovold, and Oko are all fine no matter what. Like, if I end up in even, like, a very creature light deck, the Cradle gets less good. Obviously, that, that at that point wouldn't work. But if I don't end up getting a bunch of cheap creatures, I could end up in kind of like a blue-green counterspell deck. Okay, so Aragorn came back, so did Thief, so did V-Click. I think I just take V-Click. It works pretty nicely with what I've got. And, I, and these cards, Thief and Aragorn, are a little harder to cast. And then now there's Jetmir's Garden and Thought Scour. Also Starnheim Unleashed and Godless Shrine, but I'm not that I'm not that stoked about any of these. But I don't really think I'm gonna play Thought Scour, so I think I'll just take the Jetmir's Garden. Watley seems like a fine wheel, though I have all three drops. I don't really love that. Watley has some applications, though. I don't think the other cards really do. Oh, and then now I'm just gonna take Odawara. I like Terra Sunder, but free spells are, are nice. Or like land spells, I guess, is probably a better way to say it. All right, so pack one was interesting. Don't have a strong sense of where I'm going. I've got a lot of options. Let's open something awesome. Not so much. Uh, there's Caves of Chaos Adventure, and I hate passing it because I didn't see any red. Though Pyrokinesis did wheel. That, that's something, because that's not a bad card. I'm looking at taking Sheldock Isle or Avacyn's Pilgrim. This is just such a weak pick one. There's also show and tell. I could take like portal and try to wheel show and tell, but this isn't a really good show and tell deck outside of that. This Kinnon really didn't get there. Shame that that basalt monolith didn't wheel. I think I might just shell dock. It's just, it's that or just take caves of cast adventure. I have a Jetmere's garden. Yeah, shell dock is just probably too weak to take. Let's just take the adventurer. All right, so brain freeze is getting past the opposite direction of breach. So let's kind of hope that ends up in the right place. I'm probably just gonna take remand over reanimate here. Remain's really good. I don't know that Eight Picks is playing black. The Dothy, the late Dothy Voidwalker implies he's not, so I, I think it's okay to pass the reanimate. And Remain's obviously just a, a fantastic card. So I have one black card and one red card, and the rest are just blue green cards. So we'll, we'll have to kind of see where we end up here, but certainly have a lot of potential. In this pack, Okay, so Emrakul got passed by two players, so neither Adrian nor Troll said it took the channel. I kind of hope those don't end up in the same place. There's another good black card in Necromancy, and there's Broadside Bombardiers. This card's busted. I'm going to take the Broadside Bombardiers. I don't have enough three drops yet is the thing. Uh, and I'm glad I took that Jetmere's Garden, because I, now I think I've got a pretty good red splash. Oof, another gr Greenimate card. I guess I'll take Copperline Gorge, though, because... Oh, there's also Bayou. Huh. So the difference between Copperland Gorge and Bayou is I have more of a need for red mana because I have the two good red cards and just the one black card. But Bayou is fetchable, so I kind of feel like I should just take Bayou. The Gorge wheels some of the time anyway. Bayou I think is less likely to, and I don't care about the rest of the pack. So yeah, that seems like the deal to me. Hwatley helps Splash as well. Really... I could go for one drops. If that Abyssin's Pilgrim wheels, that would be nice, even though it doesn't tap for the exact right mana that I'm looking for. If I pick up, I mean, Birds is obviously gone, but some sort of Hierarch. Mm. So this pack has a Fallen Shinobi, a Nature's Lore, Once Upon a Time, Maze, Maze of Ith. It's also a Stoneforge Mystic and a Death Greeters Champion. I think I might take Nature's Lore. It currently gets both black and red mana, which is pretty nice. And I'm, I'm still on the lookout for a blue green land. Okay. I think Nature's Lore is pretty strong and passing, again, more reanimate stuff. I, I really don't love that. Okay, Sika's Chariot versus Lorien Revealed. This looks like a Chariot deck. Chariot's a great four. It's great with Cradle. I like Lorien Revealed and all, but... Sika's Chariot is, has been a card I've been impressed with. And I don't have any blue lands to get yet with Lorien Revealed, so it's not like it would be cycling to fix my mana. 
I mean, the Cradle Pick is looking okay. I don't have as many cheap creatures as I would like, and I'm not sure I'm even going to play all these threes, but I feel like, I'm, especially with the Chariot and then just getting a pretty good amount of creatures overall, Cradle has some good potential here, and... Let's see, Shell Dot came back. I mean, I guess I'll take it now. I don't think I'm supposed to take Mana Morphos. Blood Crypt is also kind of interesting if I'm playing black and red. Honestly, I should probably take Blood Crypt. This deck's a little bit more assertive. Let's just do that. Over Mana Morphos, Shell Dot Isle, Restless Vents, and all that. Prismari Command, Tails End, Celestial Colonnade, Dress Down. I do like a lot of these cards. There's also Blue Black Talisman, but I really want one into three ramp, not two into four as much. I kind of want to just take Tails End. Is that better than Dress Down? They're both, I think, decent reactive cards. I don't have any particular combos with, with them. Mm, I think... No, I'll take Dress Down, I guess. It's pretty close. I, I don't actually know which one's better. Here, I'll probably take Plow Under, though. Actually, this looks like a sick Unearth deck. Never mind. I have, like, <laughs> five good three drops to Unearth, and it cycles if I don't have them. All right, sorry, Plowunder. I think that is going to be better. Now there's three good white cards on the pack. Battlesphere, Seat, and Gix's Command. I guess I'll take the Gix's Command and pass all the white cards. Now there's a Death Greeter's Champion and a Fallen Shinobi. I think I think I actually just take the Shinobi here. This could be a Shinobi deck, and Death Greeter's Champion is good, but I feel like I'm not as quite so aggressive. This pack, I don't think I'm going to play any of these cards, but maybe Lingering Souls... I don't, both Rafine and Lingering Souls are kind of like the fifth color, but let's just take the Lingering Souls. I think that's a better card. I, I probably should play Manamorphose at this point, and I don't really want Simic Growth Chamber, so I'll just take the Manamorphose. And I got two picks left here. Uh, Tail's End, I guess I'll take. I think Tail's End is actually a pretty good card. And pack three, all right. Mana Crypt time, Mox time, Lotus time. Let's go, let's go. Soul Ring, all right, we'll take the Soul Ring. We've got we've got some good soul ring cards. Nice. All right. Passing a DT and Exhum and Preacher and Bitter Triumph, but we got past a ton of black this pack, so I feel pretty good about this. And probably nothing too great coming back around, though there is both Crucible and Ramen Up. So definitely looking for one drop elves if I can get them. Lands are also good. Oof, this pack has a lot of bangers. Okay. So a million black cards. I hope one of my teammates is playing black. Mac plays black a good amount, but he's not that close to me. There's Gut, but I have all threes and no twos, so Gut's not very good. Karyatid looks awesome in this deck. Passing a Grief. I do like Converter in general. I also like Nissa and Steam Vents, but I feel like this is just a Karyatid deck through and through, and I will likely get something back out of this pack. I'd be pretty shocked if I didn't. All right, and this pack has both Misty and Breeding Pool, but it's got to be Misty because it's blue-green black, and even red. So, yeah, we're going to take Misty and really hope to wheel a breeding pool. Not super likely. There's also like Ponder, Magda, Thalia, Seed Shark, World Spine Worm if someone's doing something unfair. And then Windswept Teeth. Yeah, I'm going to slam Windswept Teeth. The mana's really coming together. Windswept Teeth doesn't currently get blue, but gets all the other colors. So take that over, honestly, just cards that aren't very close to it. And then now, oh, we have a Subtlety. Uh, yeah, I mean, this pack doesn't have very much for me. It's tons of white cards and red cards, but Subtlety, let's see, I'm not going to main Tails End probably, but Subtlety with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, this is enough cards. And so I love Subtlety is just a good tempo play. And then here, Kite Sail Larcenist is a good card, but I have so many twos, or threes rather. The only two one-drops I could have taken in this whole draft were a Birds of Paradise and a Havison's Pilgrim. And the birds I took um, Oko over that, you know, wasn't, it wasn't close. Havison's Pilgrim was closer, but I, I'm pretty happy with the Cave of Cast Adventurer pick. As for this pack, I could just take Gemstone Caverns. It's pretty sick in this deck, so I'll do that I, over, a, I think, a bunch of decent playables. And then in Dotha Triumph Wield, I don't have any actual white cards. So I could splash Lingering Souls, but I still think that's probably better because I don't need Ramen Up and I don't need, oh yeah, any of this other stuff. So right now I'm playing 19 lands, but, you know, I can, I'm sure we can 
find a couple more playables. Okay, Steam Vents came back around, and that makes Misty into Untapped Red. It still doesn't make Windswept Heath pop. There's also Currency Converter, which, let's see, do I have any discard? I don't have any discard. There's also Endurance as just a hate pick, or rather, on a sideboard card. Same with Scavenging Ooze. Mm, there's a chance one of those comes back. I think I should just take Steam Vents here. Curve out decks like this really have to take their lands highly because you need you need to be able to cast your spells on curve, as 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 you might imagine. Oh my god, Metamorphose helps too. Metamorphose is actually kind of a combo with Soul Ring, lets you convert a green and a colorless into two colored mana. So like turn one Soul Ring, turn two, you can use Metamorphose to cast something. Alright, well Breeding Pool shockingly didn't wheel. I don't care about most of this stuff. I could take Bring to Light. Because I think there is a Valky that could come back around. I could take Soul Cauldron. It's a sick combo with Bombardiers. I think that's the only card it combos with in my deck. Well, I guess Sylvan Carried it in Liberator. I could take Chrome Host. Doesn't look like a great Chrome Host Seed Shark deck. Um, let's take the Soul Cauldron in case they're reanimating. Oh, I like Brazen Borrower. I think that's probably better than taking a Talisman. I don't want Lotus Field or Abundant Harvest. Borrower is a good good card in this kind of deck. Okay, the Valky came back. I guess I'll hate it. Adrian does like the bring to light kind of stuff. Larsenist came back, and I've actually been pretty impressed with that card, so I think I'll take that too. And I guess Restless Prairie, pass all the Fast Bond stuff. Oh, and Endurance came back. All right, well, that's awesome. Okay, well, I definitely got enough playables, and we don't have any white, so we're like four color, no white. Kind of like mid-range. Yeah, this is a deck I draft. <laughs> Unfortunately, both my Triumphs produce white, but that, that's okay. Well, had to take Misty over Breeding Pool, but man, that Breeding Pool would have been good in this deck. Did pick up Sylvan Carriage, and of course that Soul Ring opened helped quite nicely. Oh, we got the Brink to Light back last pick. All right, well, Valky is in then. That's totally fine. I mean, I'm, I'm happy enough Bring to Light for like a Caves of Chaos Adventurer. You know, in, as a backup plan, and Bring to Light Valky is actually quite sick. All right, let's get to deck building. Alrighty, so I ended up cutting the Cradle and then cutting Endurance and Dress Down because Mac has the Nut Reanimator deck. I love it. And new Mac was playing black. And Troll has Brain Freeze, LED, Underworld Breach. So I do like that too. But I'm one card over here. Um. I, I do like Bring to Light Valky in this deck. I'm not playing any white cards, which I think is fine. I don't think I need Lingering Souls. One of them do, does have Emrakul Channel. Max does. I don't love that. I'm looking at one of these threes, and I think my weakest three is probably Huali, but or maybe Vendillion Click. They have two white aggro players. Vendillion Click's not that good. It's only good against the Emrakul player. Obviously, cutting a blue card with subtlety is like a bit awkward, but I think that's all right. And let's see. So how many mountains do I need? One, two, three, four, five red sources. So this would be six red sources plus Karyatid Manamorphos and Huatli. Yeah, Huatli I think is probably good. Uh, that's okay for basically two red cards. One, Swamp is one, two, three, four, five, six black sources, plus Nature's Lore is now seven. Nature's Lore, oh, Nature's Lore can also get red. Uh, six plus Karyatid, Nature's Lore, Wally, for Unearth and Leovold and Shinobi. And Unearth Cycles, Valky too, but I'm not really planning on casting that too often. And then that leaves, let's see, three islands is three. Windswept Teeth does not get blue. Oh, shame. Three, four, five, six. Oh, I want more and more. Seven blue plus the green fixing. Because I think I have a decent amount of green lands. And then three forests plus Windswept is four, five, six, seven, eight green sources. Is there anything to be done here? I'm just basically deciding between the eighth. The ninth green, whether I want to cut an island for a forest or four, five, six, seven. Is this seven blue? Yeah, I almost want to play 18 lands, but I guess I can't with like nature's lore. I guess I just have to cut. Oh man, nature's lore doesn't get blue either. That's really a shame. I do have Manamorphos and Karyatid and Huatli, so I guess I just have to cut the blue because I think I want one more green here. And I'll put a planes in the board in case I want to do that. Two more. And 
All right. I think this is where I'm at. Let's see, check on the teammates' decks and see what they think. All right. Max deck is disgusting. Uh, Mac has done it again. He's got Mox Ruby, Xander's Lounge, two fetches, Reanimate, <laughs> Exhume, Unmarked Grave, Necromancy, Grief from the Catacombs, which he wheeled, by the way, Grave Titan, Archon, Gristlebrand, Ashen Rider. Love to see it. Uh, also, Orcish Bowmasters, Ragavan, and a bunch of removal. K Command, Fire Covenant, Prismari Command, Toxic Deluge. I, I, I expect good things out of Mac here. And Troll's deck is not too shabby either. He's got Mana Crypt, Mox Diamond, Strip Mine Crucible, LED, Breach, Brain Freeze, Whole Breacher in the sideboard because we think they have two white aggro decks and a green Emrakul channel deck. Uh, Gut, Chrome Host Seed Shark, Psy, <laughs> a bunch of artifacts, including the currency converter he got super late, Time Warp, Kappa Cannoneer, Metamorph, Frantic Search too. Yeah, these decks these decks look great. Let's, uh, let's see how we do, but uh, I'm feeling good right now. Alrighty, time for round one, playing against uh, Heat Picks, and oh, we got a Soul Ring in the opener. We are on the draw, but you know what? I'll accept being on the draw if I get to Soul Ring here. Playing against Inspiring Vantage Go. Oh, yeah, nice. Uh, so, yeah, we do Forest here into Soul Ring. Hopefully I don't get mana tithed. <laughs> so turn two, it's actually kind of sick. I can uh, Nature's Lore and play a three drop. Can't get Oka. Oh man, I still don't have blue mana. That's that is really a shame. Ah, oh, getting abraded. Okay, okay. Um, let's go. I want to save the fetch for tireless tracker, and I think here I already have black. I already have red. I guess I just get the Jetmere's Garden. And do I, I think I'd rather have multiple red. Then multiple black, I don't know, it's kind of the same. All right, well, gone are the dreams of my turn two, three drop. Being on the draw does have a drawback. Uh, but my opponent also didn't get to play anything on turn two, so they have a turn three play now, that's all right. Ranger Capitan of Eos. Getting Mother of Runes, perhaps? Oh, this is gonna be great. I'm gonna go Tracker, Heath, make two clues, and then Bombardiers can just attack and throw clues. Throwing clues all over. Do I block the Ranger Captain of Eos with Tireless Trackers? Kind of my question. I'm not sure. Would really like to draw blue mana. Currently have two really good cards. Well, one really good card and one decent card. Kind of locked under my... Uh, or locked out because I don't have blue. Okay. Swamp was a really bad draw. All right. Yeah, Mother of Runes was the fetch. Tracker. Heath. Just gonna do this now, and I think I just get the tap land, but I guess I might want to cycle the tap land. How bad is it to draw the tap land, though? I guess it's not even that bad. Let's just get the bayou. That's fine. I still have five mana, so even if I draw a tap land, I can crack a clue and play bombardiers. Hmm. I'm at seventeen. Is it twenty? <sighs> do I block the ranger captain? I don't think so, because bombardier plus tracker is a really strong combination. I'm not that close to dying. I mean, I guess we'll see what he plays. Maybe he might just attack first before showing me what else he's going to play. But, or he's just going to kill the tireless tracker. All right, a braid and unholy heat. All right, I really need him not to play another card besides the mother runes this turn. That would be quite nice. Because if he double spells this turn, it's going to be pretty annoying. Okay, I go to 14 here. And let's see. Uh, he is double spelling. All right. Well, I'll kill the Mother of Runes. He's triple spelled this turn, actually. All right. If I draw a blue, that would actually be still pretty nice because then I could Brazen Borrower the Lion Sash at some point. So blue is fine and spells are fine that aren't blue spells, I guess. Drawing non blue spells or uh, non-blue lands is pretty bad for me, and I guess drawing drawing blue spells isn't quite as bad, because then at least I would get to play them at some point, but I'm really just hoping to draw an island here, or, or just a good spell, I suppose. I would also take that. Metamorphos would be a kind of sick one. Let's see, let's draw. Island is nice. All right, so let's go island. 
Broadside Bombardiers leaving Brazen Borrower up. And my plan here is to attack and throw a clue at the Mother of Runes and then pass with mana up. Because that leaves me um, in a spot to either Brazen Borrower the Lion Sash if he starts to pump it, or just crack a clue. Though cracking a clue is like a little less appealing with a Bombardiers in play because Bombardiers is... Uh, is a really good card when you, you just get free shocks throwing around, but uh, I will probably crack it if I don't do anything, because Oko can also create stuff. The one one thing that really points me in the direction of casting Brazen Bar is I only have the one blue mana, so if I don't cast Brazen Bar or this turn, or Petty Theft rather, then next turn I won't be in a position to cast Oko and, and use Brazen Bar. So let's just go ahead and send in the Bombardiers and kill the Mother of Runes. I guess I will allow a double block, I suppose. All right, send. If you really want a double block, you can. I'm not gonna work out well. <laughs> and then toss the clue at the Mother of Runes and move on with the turn. Okay, Bombardiers, Mother of Runes, sack the clue. Pass the turn. I guess maybe they could have mutagenic growth? Or I think really what's happening is they're just kind of tanking on every play even if they don't have something is what it seems like. All right, take two. If they don't have something to play, I mean, they triple spelled last turn, that's pretty good. One drop, one drop, two drop is sick on turn four. I was like, how am I behind here? When I when I went turn one soul ring and, their turn, and they had no turn one play and they had to turn two, they use their turn two play to kill my turn one play. The answer was three drop into three spells on the next turn. So they had played five spells <laughs> by turn four. And I guess I had played just three. Well, then the Bombardiers is number four. I mean, it's, this is a close game. Uh, Ranger Captain being a three, three obviously is, is pretty, pretty burly. I'm, pretty good chance I get to throw this clue with the Lion Sash. I mean, it'll depend. They, so the thing that's kind of nice is they have incentive to pump the Lion Sash when they attack to get extra damage in, given that the Bombardiers is potentially going to cause them problems. But if they have a third removal spell, then yeah, I'm probably going to lose, or at least it will be more difficult. I also don't like that I, I can't Brazen Bar or the Ranger Captain, or at least if I do, it's just not a very good play. So I imagine I'm getting attacked here. Trying to block Broadside Bombardiers is a somewhat dubious proposition. So if they pump Lion Sash once, do I bounce it? Or do I want to bounce it? I mean, I'm not going to bounce it if they pump it zero times. And if they pump it twice, I'm definitely bouncing it. Once is like the interesting midpoint where... Yeah, all right. I don't really want to take the damage, but it's not big enough to survive the Bombardiers. Okay, so they're pumping again, sure. And one more time, for good measure? No, all right, Petty Theft on the Lion Sash. And let's see how this goes. We got, they don't have enough mana to replay it and make it safe from Bombardiers. They probably have another play this turn, if I had to guess, because I guess if they had nothing, they might just pump the Lion Sash again. Though maybe they wouldn't in case I had some kind of reanimate sort of nonsense. Let's see what their follow-up is. The good thing is with the Bombardiers in play, there's not that many cards they can play that are, are that great to follow it up with, or rather to, to play this turn. All right, Odawara. Uh, I don't really want to use that. Let's see. <laughs> I could, I've got a couple options here. I can attack for two, play Oko, and make my clue into a 3-3. Three, three. And that blocks Ranger Captain and keeps me at, I'm still at 11, and I have a blocker, and, and Oko's a, a five toughness. I could attack with Bombardier. I mean, everything that involves attacking with Bombardiers. I could also go play the Odawara, play the Brazen Bar, and throw it at the Ranger Captain, but that doesn't seem very good. I think I'm going to make the Oko play. I don't have a reason not to play my Swamp here. And playing Odawara is kind of bad because I feel like it's 
a nice uh, combo piece or a nice uh, reaction piece in case they have something. Oh, get lost on this. Okay. You know what? That's actually fine. Um, because now I can just go Oko. And I guess if I'm going to do that, I'll just sack the clue. Crack the clue. Maybe I, I guess I could have cracked clue in response. I'm going to play Oko. Oops. Okay. And plus one on the map token and then pass. I like having the map tokens in play as three threes. They can play a Lion Sash, but I still have this Odawara. I just need to draw another spell, probably. I've drawn a bunch of lands the last couple turns. So I feel like uh, a decent spell would set me right. They did miss a land drop last turn, which I don't like because they have enough lands to cast all their spells. Yeah, now they have three spells in hand. One of them is Lion Sash, which isn't the most effective. They've played three good removal spells so far. Let's let's hope they don't have a fourth, because this Oko, if it sticks, I'm going to win. And Odawara is a pretty good way to keep Oko alive here, uh, assuming they don't kill it right away. Is this fourth Earlingus? Okay. Can't stop that. So what are you going to do now? You're just going to attack me with everything? All right. Um... I mean, pretty clear. I just block that. I take seven going into four. Okay. Fourth Earlingus is a good card. Wow, their draw is nice. All right. Action. That's not great. Um, I think I attack. Yeah. I really need to draw a spell this turn. All right. I'm just going to attack, take the Monarch, make my other token into a 3-3. Three, three and pass the turn and I die to like everything but that's fine I don't know I could also minus Oko how, how does that work well it's a tap token anyway so let's just plus one the map token play a tapped steam vents I think and well let's just take a look at my deck first do I have any instant speed interaction no I mean I could draw a counterspell or something, but I, I don't have any way to, to interact with any of their creatures. So I guess I'll just play a tapped steam vents and pass. Draw off the monarch. They have a lion sash that doesn't do it. Ugh. And another land here. I mean, they had a sick draw, and I think if I, you know, drew one more spell to play this turn. Or, or to prior turn, honestly, I would be in okay shape, but have have done a lot of bricking so far. Yeah, I think from my opening hand, have I not drawn a spell? That's true, actually, I think. <laughs> my opening hand is like Soul Ring, Nature's Lore, Brombeers, Oko. Maybe I didn't have the Brazen Bar, I can't remember now, but I think I've, I've literally drawn this like seven land in a row. All right. What would be sick is if he sacked the Ranger Captain so I couldn't play spells and then played like, tried to play like a game winning haste creature and I had Odawara. <laughs> I, I wouldn't mind that. If you play anything that affects the board, I lose. I could have not taken the Monarch, but I just don't think that's a way to win the game. I mean, maybe it's a little bit too reckless, but I, I don't know. I like to try to try to win here. There is not, um, basically there's nothing I can beat here. So we'll, we'll see, we'll see what happens, but I'm not feeling optimistic. And what do you got? You have Lion Sash and two unknowns. Death Greeter's Champion. Yeah, just a haste creature is good enough. All right, down a game here. Well, if you draw that many lands in a row, you're going to lose. Um, so Endurance is kind of nice because... Oh, and I want Gemstone Caverns now that I'm on the draw. I think I have to take out a Forest here. Endurance is kind of nice because... A flash 3-4 against that kind of deck is pretty good. I think I, I like Unearth. I like Outland Liberator. Fallen Shinobi might be ambitious, and they have a lot of removal, so I think maybe I'll do that. You could also Dress, dress Down kind of stops 4th Eorlingus, but kind of not. It, it If you cast Dress Down in response to 4th, or after 4th Resolve, but before they attack, they lose haste. But I think that that's kind of weak, so I think I'm just going to do this. 
Alrighty, so down a game here on the draw. Definitely want gemstone caverns in over a forest. Do I want dress down? It, it can stop fourth year lingus pretty effectively. It takes haste away and makes it a little less likely I'm getting uh, hit by those, but that doesn't seem great. I do like endurance. Leopold's not amazing, but it's still totally fine. Fallen Shinobi seems like my worst card because they've got a bunch of removal. I just don't feel confident I'm going to get to Shinobi. And I think keeping Twister Leovold is good. The other alternative is take out the Twister just and keep the Fallen Shinobi or put in like a Lingering, or a, sorry, a Vendillion Click or the Dress Down or Tail's End. No, I don't think Tail's End is good either. All right, I think I'm just going to play the Endurance here. I'm on the play here. I'd like to play first. Oh, why did I put Jumpstone Cavern on the play? I don't know. Uh, it doesn't look like it's going to hurt me here, but yeah. All right, well, I have a kind of funny hand here where I can Mana Morphose into Mana Drain, but then I don't have red for Caves of Chaos or Bombardiers. And then, I can't believe I put in Jumpstone Cavern. See, as I don't like that card, you all get confused. Uh, and then my plan is... Here, I just need to see what I draw, and obviously he might not even have a spell that I want to drain on turn two. But I would love to go turn two drain, turn three caves of chaos adventure. That that would be the ideal scenario. To do that, I need to draw a blue source on this turn or a red source in the next couple turns. So both of those seem like a pretty reasonable thing to have happen. All right, no turn one play. Blue source would be nice. Oh, okay. Just play Odawara here. That. And that works out totally fine. And now we have a really good chance of playing adventure. I guess I would have just preferred to draw a red source because now I have two red cards in hand and mana more. Oh, no, it doesn't matter because if I cast this, I get my mountain. If they don't play anything, then that's a little different. But then I probably just go land and go. Oh, yeah, we are mana draining that. Mana drain. There's a Leovold. Not really into that, though. So... I guess I get red green. Because if I draw nature's lore, I could do something. Um, Keys of Chaos Adventure. Now I get a forest, I believe. Yeah, that looks right. Let's get forest and pass the turn. And you got to have kind of a lot to get out of this. Caves of Chaos Adventure, while they have nothing in play and only two lands, is pretty tough to beat. Because next turn... If they kill the adventurer, I still have the initiative. They have to like have so, like swords to plowshares plus a haster or something. Skyclave. Well, Skyclave is a pretty good one. Um, if I can find, I'm gonna go to the lost well. If I can find something cheap, uh, bottom. I think I yeah actually I definitely put Outland Liberator on top because now I can go Forest, Leovold, and then. If they do something, then next turn, they, maybe they take the initiative. Next turn, I get to go Bombardier's Attack, throw the Outland Liberator for four damage. Had I hit um, a one-mana play, which actually, I don't really have any. I guess Soaring. I could have uh, I could have maybe gone one-mana man, one man play, Bombardier's Kill Skyclave. But this still should be good. I swear to God, though, if they have <laughs> Unholy Heat also, I'm going to be extremely uh, annoyed because that's just an outrageous amount of things. Skyclave into double removal spell to take back the initiative. I mean, good beats if so. Okay, well, you get a land. I don't even mind if they play like a two-mana creature here because then I get to Bombardiers. Oh, Glimmerlands? Yeah, that's fine. So now I get to go Mountain, Bombardiers. Attack, take the initiative. Oh, wait, I don't even... Ha oh, this is unbelievable. I just get to go to the stash, actually, so I don't even have to uh, throw... Yeah, now I can just throw the, the treasure token at the Skyclave <clears throat> and then just pass with Remand up. <laughs> all right, all right, that's a good comeback. I don't think I'm supposed to play the Liberator there because I have a 4-4 blocker, and I think having a Remand up is better than just having a 2-2 in play. Pomperty Hears is just an unbelievable card. I will never stop remarking on that. I probably will, actually. I bet in a couple weeks, you know, I'll have, like, really internalized how busted Bombardiers is and not have a need to talk about it. Kind of like, I don't know, with, like, 
Caves of Chaos Adventure, right? Like, yeah, this card is pretty busted, but you know, I don't, I don't feel the need to talk about it as much because I've seen it. Oh, that's pretty good that they played that. Yeah, untap. Well, I was hoping they'd play a five drop, but remaining the Flicker Wisp is still pretty good because that was going to kill my illusion token. Illusions, Michael. Um, there's a land. Would like to not draw another land, but next turn I get to go to the catacombs. And then the Flick Risp has like a lot of things to take care of. This red-white deck is very good. Haven't even seen a piece of power out of it, and it's just had great curves. So what did they do? They went burst lightning plus figure. Wow, they're just so good at just casting five spells a turn. I guess that's that's what you do, right? All right, let's go Huatli. I guess I'll get an island here. And do I want to attack? So they have Flicker Wisp. And if they Flicker Wisp my 4-4, four, four, they can attack with those two and I'll have two blockers. I kind of feel like I do attack here. Well, no, I really just want to... I just need to get to the last part of the initiative. So let's not attack and let's play the island and then just pass the turn here. Oh, I actually should have played... No, I should have played Jetmere's Garden because of Whatley. I didn't really look at my land. I mean, I naturally played that to keep Outland Liberator up, but I think because of Whatley, it was worth it was worth uh, playing a white land or red land. Well, I might find another one. So I've got four blockers. They have two attackers. They have one removal spell, so they need a second. I needed two more removal spells, or like a Haste Flyer, which there's not like an absurd absurdly large amount of those there's no authority in the draft i don't unless they like first picked it or something or second picked it so i feel pretty good about this situation all right here comes the flicker wisp still pretty good a 3-1 flyer that kills my 4-4 is not bad at all and lion sash well that, that i can kill without land liberator though i don't even really need to right now all right let's draw well let's first go into the Land of the Three Kings. Uh, tireless Tracker or Subtlety or Endurance? Tireless Tracker draws me cards, but Endurance and Subtlety are flyers. Um, I kind of feel like I would rather just have a giant Subtlety. They have for removal, they still have Get Lost though. How bad is it if they, they're at level one initiative and this turn I can make some attacks? This is close. I think I'm going to get the tracker. Junoko. I like that. And now... Now I do think... I do think I actually play the Jetmere's Garden, especially since I have the tracker going, so... There's no real need not to. And then let's crack this to draw... See where we're at. Okay. Soul Ring is uh, never bad. And... Do I want to make any attacks? I, I could also Oko to, to ground the Flicker Wisp, make it a 3-3, just idiot. I kind of like that. Let's go Oko, play this, and then Flicker Wisp loses all abilities. And I have an Outland Liberator here, so I don't really need to kill it with Outland, uh, the kill the Lion Sash right now. I don't care about them exiling cards out of my graveyard. All right, Whew. got game two here. Well, let's let's head to game three. All right, I'm on the draw. Okay, the Gemstone Cavern is good now. <laughs> what a buffoon. Uh, do I want Dress Down? I just, I go back and forth because the card definitely has its moments. When you cast in response to like a Flicker Wisp, it's pretty good. It's okay in response to Ranger Captain. I feel pretty good about not playing Fallen Shinobi. I'm kind of wondering if I should play Lingering Souls. The problem is playing a basic Plains is just too much for me, I think. Would be good in this matchup. Maybe, oh man, as good as Mana Drain is, I wonder if, no. I, I still like Subtlety in my deck and all that. And Leo Twister is just a sick combo if the game stalls out at all. All right, I think I like where I'm at. Let's do it. Let's go Soul Ring. All right. Come on, Soul Ring, no whammies. That's a Soul Ring. All right. That looks like no whammies to me. So, and they're mulliganing. All right, all right. We take those. 
So my only green source is Endotha Triome, which is a little bit awkward, but now that I know I have a braid, it's actually not so bad, because I just go turn one Triome, turn two land, soul ring, tireless tracker. And then if they kill tireless tracker, I just unearth it. All right, they multi five, that's gonna be tough. No turn one play, yeah, so just definitely play Endotha Triome. And I could also go, now that I've drawn the Kite Sail Larcenist, land, Kite Sail Larcenist, Sol Ring, Kite Sail Larcenist. Um, you know what, because of Unearth, I th oh, this, is, this is tough. I know I'm debating like two close plays against an opponent who molded five and has no white mana, but you know what, I'm gonna play the Tracker. And the reason I'm playing Tracker is if they have a Braid, they could just kill the Soul Ring. And if that's the case, then I wouldn't be able to get my Tracker value anyway. And Unearth means it's just so easy to go Unearth, Tracker, replay a land. And let's see which one they kill. They killed the Soul Ring anyway. Okay. And now they're going to kill the Tireless Tracker, presumably. They drew their white mana. All right. Don't exile the Tireless Tracker, please. All right. Burst Lightning into Spellbook Vendor. That's not bad. But Unearth is really showing its value here, because now I'm going to Unearth Tireless Tracker for one mana. Play this, make a clue. They have Unholy Heat in their deck. I'm just going to crack the clue now. All right, a forest would be kind of nice. Another island is not great, but I, I like my spot. They get they do get to attack with Spellbook Vendor and put a Sorcerer roll on it if they want, I suppose. Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Okay, that I don't mind so much, because now I just get to go Island... Put a counter on this, and I think, well, this is a tough play now, because I, I think I want a Brazen Borrower. I guess I don't really need to. Let's just pass with mana up. They can they can use their Fable. I have a Borrower to kill the Goblin Shaman. Let's say they discarded two lands. I mean, pretty sick mold of five. Their deck is good. <laughs> they abraded my Soul Ring both times on turn one. <laughs> All right, Flame Slash on the Tireless Track. Flame Slash? That was the draw? Oh, man, that was a sick draw. I can't remand it, and sure. All right, I feel I'm, like I'm still doing okay here. It'll kind of depend on on what they do with this Spellbook Vendor. I really want them to put the counter on the, on the Goblin Shaman. Uh, unfortunately, they're good at magic. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that's fine. So what am I going to bounce? I guess I, st I just have to bounce the Goblin Shaman token. Because if I bounce the Spellbook Vendor, they attack and then just replay Spellbook Vendor. That seems really bad. You get your Scry one. It's fine. I'll sack my clue. I still feel like I'm doing okay here. If I can draw a green source, I can play Leovold and have her manned up. Or I can actually just go Kite Sail Larcenist. All right. I'm just kind of curious if they scryed to the top or bottom. Because this is a yeah, big draft here. Um, to put it on top. All right. Well, all right. Let's just sack this. Draw a card. Mm. I've got to play Hotly. I'm just going to basically take a turn off here to go Hotly get a forest. And I have a Valky coming up. So that's pretty good. I'm just going to leave Remand up here. I kind of feel like I can do that. I do get hit here by the Spellbook Vendor, but I really don't want them landing a spell. All right, yeah, let's go kill the Hell Rider. They can hit me. And then next turn, he's got Hell Rider, and if he draws a land, he can copy it. I don't like that very much. Oh, Subtlety is disgusting here. Okay, so now, yeah, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring to light and then get Valky, and then cast Tybalt Cosmic Imposter, and then exile the Spellbook Vendor, and then pass the turn, and they're just gonna be like, oh, Hellrider, and nope, that is not gonna happen. We are, we are, we're gonna say no to that one. So who do I pitch? I guess I probably pitch the Leovold? Is that right? Because if... If I pitch Leovold, I can play Larcenist on the Reflection token, which shuts off the Hellrider combo. Unless 
unless my opponent drew a spell, in which case maybe things go wrong. But I mean, I guess still get to cast Spellbook Vendor off Tybalt, and I have a like a bunch of cards in hand. And then, like I'm thinking, what if they have a removal spell for Hotly? Uh, and then attack Tibble. Well, then I'm I've got five cards against their one or whatever. You know, maybe not quite as many, but drawing subtlety was just an obscene draw. And they're they're probably deep in the tank now to figure out what I could have. Flicker Wisp. Well, yeah, I'm still gonna subtlety that. And I think I think I once again pitch Leovold. Um Oh, I guess I get to plus Tybalt next turn and, and play my own Flicker Wisp. I don't mind that. Let's go... Yeah, let's pitch Leovold. Target the Flicker Wisp. Oof. And I guess they're probably not going to put it on top is because of the, the Tybalt. There's just no real reason to do that, which means it's gone. Or we'll see. But I think it's most likely going to be gone. Mm -hmm. And that brings us to my turn where I have a lot of mana and a lot of options, actually. So, I mean, the Hellrider is dangerous. They put Flicker Wisp on top. Yeah, I don't think that's exactly what you wanted to do. But that's fine because we're going to get to go... Tybalt plus two, and then Tybalt's a lot safer, and then I probably slam like Kite Sail Arsonist. <laughs> I definitely don't <laughs> Flicker Wisp the Tybalt, but I could Flicker Wisp the Hwatli potentially. If I don't draw a land especially, that could be kind of nice. Okay, let's go plus two. I also don't know what my my options are. Oh, I drew Mana Drain off the top. And I can just cast it, right? Yeah, all right. So given that, how do I want to do this? I can Mana Drain the next play. I have six mana, but if I flicker wisp, oh, I guess this I wouldn't get the land immediately. So I have four mana to play with. I could go like Spellbook Bender Sylvan Karyatid. Okay, I think that's what I want to do here. I don't even think I want to preordain into mana. I don't really need to do that. And you can spend mana as any color, right? Yeah. And then. No. Uh, yeah, I guess I will attack here. I don't think there's a big reason not to. And ship the turn. And I think the the 15th pick bring to light is actually, uh, it's making hay. You gotta, you gotta make hay while the sun's shining. And uh, <laughs> bring to light for Tybalt actually really, really just got this game going. Uh, Death Greeter Champion. One card in hand, it's Hell Rider. You can make a bunch of double strikers. I'm at 12. Hmm... I'm just going to Mana Drain that. I don't really think I need to do otherwise, especially Mana Drain with Tybalt's next turn. Yeah. Whew. Got round one. And uh, Troll lost and Mac won, so we're up 2-1. Let's head to round two. All right, time for round two. I'm playing against Black Green Emrakul or Black Green Blue Emrakul Shieldred stuff. I'm on the play. Yeah, I mean, I clearly keep this hand. This hand is turn two... Charioted turn three chariot with brazen borrower back up. I mean, I don't have very many hands that win against turn two Emrakul because that you know, but uh, subtlety is actually one of the cards I really want to draw here because turn two channel Emrakul and then I subtlety the Emrakul. It's not a counter spell; it just puts it back on well on the bottom because you at that point aren't recasting it. You get an extra turn, but you just paid fifteen life. Feels like, and, and it's a two for two where you paid fifteen life. And then you got an extra card, so it's like a two for one. Yeah, I still feel, in most games, I bet if you subtlety a uh, channeled Emrakul, you're in pretty good shape. And turn one mountain makes it a lot less likely I'm getting channel Emrakul on turn two, I guess. <laughs> Let's play Sylvan Karyatid. I mean, this, this my opponent here, Max, has him to Turok, channel, and Mystical Tutor in their deck, so this mountain is like, Making me feel pretty good about the situation. I'm not really sure what else. Okay, Prismatic Beast is fine. I'm going to get a Forest. Yeah, all right. Into a Blue-Black Talisman. Oh, no, this this sets up Mystical Tutor into Channel Emrakul. 
Oh, thought seize? Dang, that, ah, that's a good start. Well, I was gonna slam chariot. Obviously that might not be the case anymore. I mean, I'm just gonna play Hotly then. I don't I don't really think it makes sense to, like holding up remand when they know I have remand is just nonsense. Damn, I was really hoping this chariot was, was gonna go the distance. What's my best draw for, for this turn? I mean, subtlety sounds pretty good because one of the ways I lose is Embercool. Oh, Fallen Shinobi is actually pretty dope. Let's go Hwatli. And then go get a blue. Pass the turn. All right, didn't get Upkeep Mystical, so that's that's a start. Hopefully there's no blocker. Hopefully this, this Hwatli can sneak in and I can Shinobi and Emrakul. That would be so sick. All right. Shieldred would be kind of annoying, but I guess I would get to... Brazen Borrower it, attack, and then have Remand up. Killing Whatley would be kind of annoying, but not really even that bad, honestly. I would just get to... Oh, Abundant Harvest. Okay. Hit Duress. <sighs> Don't care about that. Duress takes my Remand, but that makes it very likely that I'm going to get to Shinobi them. In fact, they will get to see it. But yeah, Killing Whatley is fine because I could just play an end of turn Brazen Borrower into Shinobi. And uh, my round one opponent uh, had millions of red burn spells, including the Flame Slash so, and the Abrade. So I feel like Hotly's pretty safe. I'm looking at, am I going to get like Duress plus Chain Lightning or something here? And it doesn't seem like wildly likely. Okay. Oh, that's annoying. Okay. Well, at least there's no Duress and... Just gonna play my island and I think just pass because I, I need double blue for Brazy B. I'm just gonna allow a remand to happen or a duress to happen. Remanding it, I don't think is a very good play when I'm hoping to just ninja them. Pretty hard to block the brazen borrower, too. And I don't have to play it till end of turn, so it's not vulnerable. Plus, once you get a good whack in, the the channel really stops paying dividends because you just don't have enough life for it. They do this turn. If they went Forest Channel, they could Emrakul me. Not much. Well, I guess if they would dress me first, so I couldn't uh, even remand it. Yeah. Mm, but we'll see what happens here. All right, dress is on the stack. Uh, yeah, sure. You can, you can, you can see your fate here. <laughs> you can take my remand, and you can see what's going to happen to you in just one second. I hope. I, I mean, for this not to work, Max would need. An instant speed removal spell or a flying blocker. Flying blocker is like almost impossible. Instant speed removal spell is definitely possible, but you know, if he does that, I'm just gonna slam the fallen shinobi and just kind of hope that works. I don't really have a better play. Brazen Barber. Okay. <laughs> Metamorphose, that's funny. Let's send. Okay, no blockers. Um, let's just Shinobi. I don't need to Manamorphose, and there's definitely some situations where I'd want to do that. All right, let's go. Let's go, Emrakul. All right, we connected, and two lands. Um, I guess I just play the Flooded Strand to leave mana up. All right, all right. Well, the good news is I have a Brazen Borrower, so I could potentially remove a blocker. If he has a way to kill the Fallen Shinobi, that's a lot less good for me, but I mean, there's a pretty good chance this just gets in again, even with even with the total brick, which is what I've come to expect. <laughs> I'm not really complaining there. Trust me, when I'm really complaining, you, you'll tell because I'll just go on and on. But right here, obviously I could have ended the game with this. I feel like I'm in pretty good shape because he hasn't played a land. It's not that easy to kill a Fallen Shinobi and you can't block it because of the Brazen Borrower. And I'm going to untap. I don't have much in hand, but I'm going to untap and uh, get to draw a card for turn. Cycle Manamorphose for free. If I miss again, Cycle and Dotha Triumph. So it feels like feels like this is going fine. All right, what do you got here? Two mana. Also, I can Manamorphose into Mana Drain if I get really lucky. <laughs> that seems That seems a little ambitious. They have like Tinker Portal. That seems 
unlikely, but I don't think we've seen any of that stuff, so <laughs> I'm going to guess no, but I don't know. We're casting something here. Bitter Triumph, discarding triplicate Titan. Wow, they did have a removal spell. All right. Let's crack this. Let's just get Island. Um... Yeah, I'll cycle Manamorphose, and I don't get to Brazen Borrower this way, but I think that's okay. Because if I hit Mana Drain, I would just win. And I'm not bouncing the Talisman. I don't think that's a good use of my card. All right. Well, I cycle, hit two lands off Ninja, cycled to hit a land. Let's see if I can draw a spell here. I, I'm still kind of far ahead. He's only got three cards in hand. I have a lot more mana than him. I think I'm just going to play the Liberator. Play a land and just pass. I don't and keep double borrower up. <sighs> do I kill this? I probably do. Let's see. Yeah, it's actually probably too greedy not to kill that, I think. Because he's playing a four color deck without and has, has missed land drops. Like, it feels like taking away blue and black mana. <laughs> but the upside is. If I if you didn't play a spell, I get to attack and kill it for free, but I feel like that's too greedy. Alright, let's cycle and Dotha Trium here. Alright, action. Let's go. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, there we go. That is in fact action. I don't need to use that now. Bring to light here. We are we're going straight to Valky Town. Straight there. Okay, Valky, God of Lies, Tybalt, Cosmic Imposter, there we go. Plus two this, exile the top card of each player's library. What you got? An unner I, I hit Unearth and Swamp. All right, well, I'm going to cast Unearth on, I guess, Hotly, because Hotly I can flip next turn. Okay, let's go get a Mountain and pass the turn. Now I feel... Very good, because Tybalt's pretty hard to get rid of. I have Brazen Borrower if they like try to reanimate Triplicate Titan. Okay. Shallow Grave. Um, sure, I'm going to Brazen Borrower that, I guess. I don't think... I need to I don't want to wait because if I wait and he has a way to sacrifice it and make three tokens I don't think that's ideal for me hopefully no like sneak or breach but I don't think we really saw those channels really not going to do a whole lot here all right got game one Oof. Uh, now I'm on the draw now I can really put in the gemstone caverns uh, do I want endurance probably definitely want Dress down and let's see, tails end. Well, the problem bloom with tails end is it doesn't counter, it doesn't do that much against Emrakul. Counter the extra turn, I guess. And then maybe I can do something. Dress down stops the, I mean, these are both kind of mid, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, I like subtlety a lot. Unearth seems like it could be a little mid. Bar is great. Larcenist is probably just solid. Fallen Shinobi is good too. Hmm. Um. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I don't think I want Soul Cauldron. I think the Endurance kind of covers my bases there. Tails End does counter Shieldred, which I really do like. Might cut the Outland Liberator. It doesn't sound amazing. It killed like a Talisman. That was it. And then... Unearth is probably cuttable as well. Do I cut Hwatli? I don't want to cut Oko. I don't want to cut Larsenis. Subtlety, Shinobi. Definitely not cutting Leovold. I guess I'll cut Hwatli. I think, I think that's my worst one. I don't know. It's close. All right, let's go. Game two on the draw. See if we can start with Gemstone Caverns properly this time. <laughs> uh, we did. Oh, <laughs> we did, and it's actually great. All right. Yeah, Gemstone Caverns Exile of Forest. Turn two, Nature's Lore. This hand is a little action light, but Odawar is also a way to stop Emrakul. I mean, it, 
Max is doing other things other than Emrakul, but like obviously Emrakul is just going to be the scariest thing. And if he has turn two Emrakul on the play, then yeah, I can't do anything about that with this draw. Subtlety does actually help. I could also draw Remand or Mana Drain on turn one, which in that case, I would just go Caverns, play Island Go, and then next turn Forest and, if, and Nature's Lore if it's a Remand or not if it's a Mana Drain, I guess. Because once I get to four mana up, then I don't have to. Uh, then I can just keep Odawara, and then that solves that problem. Okay, but Gemstone Caverns, basically a Mox Diamond here, which is awesome. Okay, turn one Flooded Strand. I hope I don't get duress on turn one. I hope I get duress on turn two after I cast this Nature's Lore. And no longer have to, and, and have no cards that can get me. Oh no, I'm getting thought seized or duressed probably. No, he's just getting a breeding pool. Untapped breeding pool into abundant harvest. Okay. We named land and we got dark slick shores. Understood. All right. Not land. Oh, that's, that's a good draw, though. Obviously, the duress is back on the table now. And here, I guess I get. Jetmere's Garden, I think. It's about the same either way, because the Gemstone Caverns is all the colors. All right, I really hope this Bring to Light doesn't get duressed, because I could have a turn three Valky, which would be pretty nice. I mean, turn one Nature's Lore for <laughs> a Triland is pretty awesome. So Dark Slick Shores here. If I draw Soul Ring and I have a turn two Bring to Light, oh my god, that would be that would be amazing. Right. I'm pro I feel like I'm going to get duress though. No? Okay. Um, hmm. This is a tough play. If I play Larcenist and he goes Mystical Tutor for Channel, I lose. And has Emrakul. If I wait on... He didn't have a duress last turn. Let's just wait. Because I can just bring to light next turn. I feel like that's probably fine. If I play Larcenist and and I get Mystical T Tutor Emrakul, it sounds so bad to me. And he didn't have a remove uh, discard spell last turn. It would have just cast it. I would assume it's kind of hard to imagine not. So I think keeping mana up here is fine. I'm getting hemmed. Okay. All right. Well. As long as it didn't hit both my five mana spells, I guess I'm happy, though obviously it would have worked way better to play the Larcenist there, which I think I probably will now. Once I draw another creature. All right, well, let's play Kite Sail Larcenist and pass. Mm -hmm. Okay, done. Pass the turn, and you got to kill the Larcenist, or Ninja's coming to get you. Yeah, obviously I would have won the game had I played this last turn, but... I don't know, maybe, maybe, maybe him makes that too risky. Well, that's not true. If I'd played Larcenist, then I have a higher chance of losing... I could have, well... If I'd played Larcenist, I'd have, a, I guess, one in three chance of keeping either Shinobi or Bring to Light, but if I kept... Bring to light. I then drew a Misty. So yeah, it would have certainly been better to play the Larcenist. So it looks like he might have Mystical Tutor here. And if he does, so be it, I suppose. I mean, if he has Mystical Tutor, if he has him on turn three into turn four channel, then, you know, what can you do? Thoughtseize? Ah, well, at least he Mystical for Thoughtseize. That's just not a very exciting play. Obviously, it's going to work here, but it's going to, it's a two for one in my favor. So yeah, it was a good play, though. It was a good play. It's down to four cards against my Larcenist. And doesn't have double green, but does have another spell here. Oath of Druids. Oh, no. Wow, okay. Uh, I guess I, I do need that uh, Outland Liberator after all. All right, let's just draw. Okay. I guess I probably lose here. All right, Oath hits Triplicate Titan. Okay. If I draw 
Oh, I guess... I guess I can't draw Bring to Light because it's already gone. All right, let's just draw for a turn. All right, well, if I draw um, Tybalt here, then, because I'm going to chump and then I'm going to I'm going to Oath. But if I draw Tybalt, I can exile the Triplicate Titan, and I probably win then. So I guess the Oath is still maybe an issue. I don't know. I think it's worth blocking here. I don't know what I could even oath into, but I could oath into Leovold and then cast Time Twister. I guess that's a thing. Okay. And oath. Let's go. And hit Leovold, hit milling dress down, managing tails end. Drew a land. All right. Him into into Oath. Him into Thoughtseize into Oath is a pretty good combination. Hmm. I go to five here. All right. I'm at five. Let's see what you got. Well, you don't need anything. Let's see what I got. <laughs> Brazen Borrower would at least buy me time, though. The Oath is once again on. Are you drawing me a card with Leovold? Are you playing a Shieldred? Shieldred, okay, well that means I can Oath again, though that doesn't really uh, seem like it's going to be great for me. Hit the Brazen Bar, drew a land, all right. Land, 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 land. Though there wasn't much in my deck that could save me there. All right, Gemstone Caverns is coming back out. Outland Liberator is coming back in. Forest, I guess, is coming back in. Maybe I just take the Dress Down out. And, oh, I should probably have Vendillion click in. Actually, I kind of want just another island now that I've put all these blue cards in my deck. And I think I like Tails and can also counter an Oath Trigger for a turn. I think that's pretty good. Maybe this Endurance is not, it's not looking that good to me. All right, I'm on the play here. Let's see how game three goes. All right, I'm on the play. Any Soul Rings, any Soul Rings? No, but I'm definitely gonna keep this hand. I have turn two Outland Liberator. I have a blue off Misty and hope I don't get Emra cooled. Thoughtseize doesn't stop both my fours, of course. I hope they just go Mountain Go again. That was that was nice. All right, Overgrown Tomb. Oh, duress me, please. Let's yeah, let's just do this and get an island, and then play Outland Liberator. I want to be able to play Leovold on turn three if I draw Leo. And I think that if if I draw Soul Ring, I can also play Fallen Shinobi. Yeah, I really needed to play either Blood Crypt or Island that turn. Just to keep those outs up. All right. Well, I have my four lands. I have my two good fours. I'm hoping I'm not getting uh, Emrakuld this turn. This does stop Oath of Druids, which is nice. Also, if uh, my opponent doesn't have a play, then this thing gets to flip, which is nice. Oh. I see. I see. All right. That's cool. Time to draw a Kite Sail, Arsonist, or Brazen Bar. I think this is a Triplicate Titan. Because I think if it was Emrakul, he would have just slammed it. All right. Well, we have outs. We have outs. Let's, oh, that is what we'd call an out. All right. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the only one I'm going to choose. And let's hit and hope you can't kill Kite Sail Larcenist here. Let's do. Did we steal a game? Larceny? All right. All right. They have a lot of removal spells for it, but they have to have the mana. And then I get another draw, I suppose. All right, all right. If they don't have a play this turn, I can flip the Liberator and attack the Triplicate Titan, attack and blow up Triplicate Titan. Though, honestly, they they need to kill it this turn or it's like not going to work because after this turn, well, I guess I would say I was leaving Liberator up, but I guess I probably was, am just going to cast one of my fours anyway. But... I have the option of sacking this to destroy the Triplicate Titan while it's still a treasure, so it doesn't make any any uh, crumbs. Let's see what you got. No blue mana. 
Well, you have blue from the treasure, but if you sack the Titan, obviously that reduces my risk factor considerably. Could play Shieldred here by sacking the triplicate Titan. That might be what you have to do, because after you channeled your nine life, you're facing two two creatures, like you gotta do something. Hoping you got a tutor or something. Let's see. Mm -hmm. ah, it was a bitter triumph. Can't catch a break. Let's do it. All right. Can't. Oh, you can even attack because it's haste. Uh, Brazen Barber. Okay. Huh. Interesting. Uh, well, we get to have a game at least. Man, really, really brutal just to have turn two triplicate titan into the removal spell. So I could go to one. No, going to one just can't be right. Actually, I'll just let you attack first because of Shallow Grave. Okay, kill the Titan. The problem with going to one is I have a Blood Crypt. If I could go to one and Valky here, that would have been a very different thing. I need I need Max to just not have another play this turn. No, come on. Of course, hit my Bring to Light. All right, I'm at 10. Let's see. We're pretty dead now. I do Soul Ring, so let's go Soul Ring. Oh, Soul Ring a turn earlier would have been so good. All right, well we get to cast Fallen Shinobi, so only one of the only one of the golems can attack. I need I need Max to just chill for one turn with the spells. Though I've been doing a good job ripping too. I I gotta say, if Max doesn't have another play here, then no. Wow. Just firing on all cylinders every single turn. All right. I guess it's going to be round three then that we're going to have to try to do a comeback because I don't have pest infestation or anything. Yep. That'll do it. On to round three. All right. I'm on the play against Red Green Beats. What do I think about this? If I draw a forest early, it's really good. Otherwise, yeah, no, I think this hand's actually fine. My opponent does have Black Lotus, which I don't like, but if I can hit a forest, this hand becomes the nuts. And Bombardiers into Shinobi is a pretty awesome start regardless. All right, turn on Pilgrim. Let's go forest, let's go. Okay, that's something. Mm-hmm into Reckless Storm Seeker. All right, I'm gonna get hit here for three. Oh, there's the Manamorphos, interesting. Um, let's go Manamorphos into Huatli, I think. Green, red, Huatli. Mm, get a green, I guess, all right. And maybe, just maybe, I could sneak in a Cheeky Shinobi hit here. Demonic Tutor. Is this like Black Lotus? DT for Black Lotus to play Goldspan? It's kind of what I'm guessing. Something along those lines. Okay. Well, Bombardiers is actually pretty good here, too. Because I can take out Nyssa. What do I do? Um, so this turn I take six going to 11. Yeah, I guess I don't have a choice there. And now I can go forest, nature's lore, bombardiers, attack Nyssa, kill Nyssa. Yeah, I mean, I don't think I have a better play than that. All right, let's just get... Uh, Bayou, Bombardiers, Tech Nissa. and then Sack Quatley to kill Nissa. I mean, obviously I'm not in good shape here, but this isn't a this isn't a zero percenter. 
pretty close. It's pretty close, to be honest. Well, I mean, turn turn two Stormseeker, turn three Nissa is a hell of a draw. Like, I actually don't mind this hand I have. Had I hit, had Nature's Lore on two, I don't even know how much better that would have been for me. I need my opponent to not have a whole lot this turn, but if they're tapping that Pilgrim, I don't really see how I could beat a three mana spell. Or at least there aren't very many that I could beat. And then next turn, let's see. Rabel Master. And then pump Rabel Master, give it haste. All right, yeah, we're, we're dead here. All right, down a game here. Okay, on the play. No, no, no gemstone cavern there. Uh, do I want dress down, tail's end, endurance? Uh, none of those sound like fantastic. I think I'll keep Twister on the play, and I think I'll probably side it out on the draw. Yeah, I think uh, just got to have a fast hand. All right, I would like to play first. Mm, yeah, I guess I'll keep. I don't know. I just don't think I'm supposed to mulligan. I, I don't have enough one and two mana plays to mulligan any hand that doesn't have one. Like, yeah, obviously if I had Soul Ring, this hand would be better. But on the play, on the draw, maybe I mull this. On the play, I think Huatli into Shinobi is definitely something that can be good. And I have Unearth, so like if Huatli trades off, I can Unearth Huatli, and that's pretty good. Man, maybe I'll draw a two mana play, though. Unfortunately, I can't draw Remand because I don't have a blue mana. I, I will get blue off Huatli, so Huatli into Ninja still works, but this hand does not do anything too quickly. All right, well, Tank did mold a five, so that certainly makes me feel a little better about this hand, or a lot better. Uh, no, oh, turn one, Utopia Sprawl still. Okay, turn two, Oko. Um... You know what, I'm not cycling because I think turn three Huatli, turn four Oko, unearth Huatli if it traded off or died. Seems like a pretty good start. Magda, okay. I can live with Magda because that means when I play this Huatli, which I still think I play over Oko. And I guess I'll wait on Misty though. It doesn't matter too much. I'm gonna get Island here. Pass the turn. So if you kill, Huatli to get the Magda in, then I get to go Oko and Earth. If you don't do anything to Huatli, then I get to maybe Ninja, but seems like that could be unlike that's gonna be unlikely against Red Green Deck that now has four mana. Five if if you want to throw away Magda. Olvenwald Oddity, attack for four. Is that the play? Or is this or is it kill? It's red, right? Yeah. Elvish Spirit Guide. Whoa. Okay, Bonehorn Dracosaur. Uh, that that's fine. That I'm just gonna Oko. No, I'm I'm good on that. <laughs> that's too much for me. Now you do have the opportunity to kill Oko if you have a removal spell, or or if you animate Raging Ravine. Replay. Wow, what a mold of five. Turn. <laughs> uh, well. So they're all going to attack Oko. So if I block that, Oko still dies. Yeah, I guess I'll eat the Magda and get to Ninja back. All right, well, let's hope this Ninja does the thing. Uh, yeah, it's actually worth nature's luring here, I think. I don't care about not playing. Uh, not going to play a land off ninja here. All right, let's do it. Can we hit some action here? Yes, we can. <laughs> Nissa on top of land. DT. And what's my best DT here? <sighs> Probably bring to light, honestly. Bring to light get, getting Valky seems like it's it's going to be pretty good. And pass the turn. And now Nissa's on six. I can block the Dracosaur. If you want to kill Nissa, you could activate Raging Ravine, attack for eight, you know, attack with everything. But then I get to hit with Fallen Shinobi again, so that basically doesn't work. Whew, it was a crazy game. Barely beating a mold of five. Obviously, I haven't won yet, but I feel like pretty likely to. That that Shinobi hit was big. 
that it was. All right. What do you got? You got two cards in hand, access to five mana total. I guess also if I draw Valky, I can just also just cast Tybalt next turn. All right. Attacking Nissa with both. Yeah, I'll block the Bone Horde. Nissa goes to two. And do you have an answer to Fallen Shinobi? Is this a post-combat gold span or something? Oh, Gargroth. Yeah, that's not going to do it. Not even close. All right. Mm. Fortunately, I do have to tap blue for Bring to Light. Bring to Light <laughs> for X equals the smallest amount possible. <laughs> Get Valky, Tybalt. Mm -hmm. Exile the Gargaroth. Untap the island, so now I have mana drain up. All right. All right, on the draw, gemstone in, forest out. Kix's command doesn't really do enough. Dress down. Endurance has like some applications, but I just don't think I can do it. I don't think I want the Gix's command at double black. I don't think tail end's good enough. Dress down, that does not seem like it. Lingering Souls has some a aspects that are appealing, but I just don't think the mana works that well for it. Outline Liberator is really not amazing. That stupid dragon is annoying. Is there any world where I play Gix's Command? I have, if I open on Gemstone, that's one. Heath is two, three, four, five, six, seven. I mean, that's kind of enough. I don't know, killing, I'm gonna take the Liberator out for Gix's Command. Killing the the big stuff, like killing the, the Bone Horde Dracosaur or something. Seems pretty good. And then getting a plus two plus one plus one counters and lifelink could also be awesome. All right, let's go gemstone. Let's do it. Oh. Huh, 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 huh. You know what? I'm going to keep this hand. My opponent molded to six, and here's why I'm going to keep. I'm greedy. No, that's not the reason. Uh, I care very much about winning this draft, and so do my teammates. So I'm going to keep this hand because... I'm on the draw against a really fast deck. I have Subtlety with a Twister to pitch to it, which isn't my favorite card to pitch, but you know. And I get to go, if I, any land goes turn two Nature's Lore, or turn one Nature's Lore, turn two potentially Chariot, or at the very least Hwatli, and I put Valky into the Gemstone Caverns, all right, I'm gonna keep this hand. I just don't think, I think this hand has a higher win percentage than an average six card hand on the draw. So I'm gonna put Gemstone Caverns in. Exile Valky God of Lies, which is kind of kind of sad. Also, if the tank here has any sort of black lotus draw, then this hand is so good. Alright, land, 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 land. Alright, alright. Jemir's Garden, that plays, that plays. So now I get to nature's lore on two. Or if I draw a land, just play Hotly. I really don't want him to play have a play this turn. I want him to like demonic tutor this turn for like a Lotus turn three play. Okay, Lotus. All right, well, I'll take a Lotus play here. Okay, okay. All right, well, I'm really glad I kept this hand. Subtle to you, target the gold span. Jetmere's Gardens was a lot worse than any other land. <laughs> he says greedily. All right, let's see. Is this dragon going on top or on bottom? We will find out momentarily here. I don't know what I'm hoping for. Because if he puts it on top, it means he's going to cast it in a few turns and has lands in hand. I kind of hope he bottoms it, I guess. If you're thinking, it means you don't have two lands in hand. It's it's kind of interesting when you have one land in hand. Huh. If you have one land in hand, what do you do here? You could probably keep it. So I kind of feel like he's got one land here. Okay, bottomed it. Interesting. All right. Land would be awesome here. Spell's not that bad. Mm, all right. Nature's Lore. Indotha Triome. <clears throat> all right. If I can draw... I still would like to draw a land because Chariot would be really good here. Stormseeker. No land. Okay. Let's go Chariot. 
Let's go Chariot. No. Oh, interesting. I have double black, so that's at least good. Let's get a blue here. Mm -hmm. Play it. And honestly, like, there's a chance that I can Gix's command kill all small things and put two counters on Huatli if he plays something small, like if he plays a Rabble Master or an Elf. <sighs> really wish that was an Elf instead. Okay, okay. A land would be awesome. If he doesn't have a play this turn, it's kind of tricky because if you hit for three with the Stormseeker, you open yourself up to Shinobi. If you don't, I get to Asika's Chariot, which is nice, without taking any damage. Mm, going in the tank. This is going to be a close game. <laughs> Glad I kept. I drew the land so it wasn't a disaster. Of course, an untapped land, and I think I would be winning this game by a lot, but I kept a one-lander on the draw and immediately drew a land, so I really can't complain too much. I'm liking the Gix's command here. I think that is going to be a lot better this game than... Uh, the Outland Liberator would have been. It feels like you don't have a great play this turn, or you have two great plays. <laughs> All right, what you got? <clears throat> Land would be awesome here. Demonic Tutor. Oh, okay. So that probably means no attacks, or you're just tutoring for a bolt, or you tutored for a land. Hmm. I kind of feel like the Raging Ravine is what I got tutored for. I don't think he's going to attack with the Stormseeker here. Too scared of Fallen Shinobi, I would imagine. All right, land. So now... I think I Gix's command those two things away. Well, do I? I could also just make two 3-3s. Three I think that's probably better. Because that doesn't die to Gix's command. And... Now, if uh, the tank's play is, is Greater Gargaroth here, the command just wrecks it. If it's Nyssa, it's a little harder. But the problem is, if I kill the bird with Gix's command, any land he draws, he can play one of those fives. I also have a lot of mana next turn, because these things will tap for mana. So, I could potentially double spell. Well, it's kind of hard to double spell with this hand. <laughs> this hand's pretty chunky. Well, the good thing is, if he plays one big thing, I get to get it. Oh, he gets to... I, got to, I guess he gets to flip the... The idiot. Okay. Mm, interesting. Mm, okay, I go to eight. Well, I don't mind this too much. Okay. So what do I do here? Gix's command. Oh, I actually don't Gix's command here still. I think I still set it up because I go Larcenist. Get the Bone Horde Dracosaur. And then Isika's Chariot tapping these. And part of the reason I wanted to do that was I wanted to make it so the Reckless Stormseeker leveled back down. And now, next turn, I get to search for a dinosaur. I don't think I have one of those. Let me check. No, and it's not particularly close. All right, so the one danger here is that the Dracosaur is hidden under the Larcenist, which means that if Larcenist dies, the Dracosaur comes back. But my board is much better than my opponent's, and Gix's command still looks like it can be awesome. Plus, I have tons of mana next turn. And I'm going to be able to get a Shinobi hit in, you know, almost assuredly. Oh, what I could do, what I could do, do I have enough black? I guess I don't have enough black. Oh, I was thinking, can I Shinobi the Larcenist back? The Dracosaur comes back into play, but then I Gix his command, you sack your highest power creature. And I don't know what else I do. Some other stuff. All right, land into... Oh, is this... In, no, it's not into Ravine. Into Nissa. All right, Bangers non-stop here, on both sides, really. But that means there's no way to... Currently, you don't have a way to kill the Kite Sail Larcenist. My opponent's not doing that. Oh, and I get a... Shin no, I don't get a Shinobi hit in because the, the birds could block the Larcenist. Unclear if that's going to happen, though. 
no attacks here really oh i guess you can they can uh put the mountain up to a four three and attack and i either animate chariot and block or i block with the cats i mean at this point it feels like i can double block with the cats and then go like gix's command put two counters on the larcenists and kill the two the two power creatures which is both the storm seeker and the birds of paradise and then animate chariot cop attack and kill nissa and copy dinosaur token and then my one risk is that if the if they top deck removal for larcenus the boneheart drakosaur comes back but that would reduce my opponent to just four raging ravine two lands sprawl and drakosaur i kind of don't mind that i think that could be reasonable all right, mountains coming in. So yeah, that that seems like a really a really good play. Good job, Luis. You've done it again. <laughs> okay, those die. Untap. Roar says, "Go get a dinosaur." No thanks. Uh, <laughs> no dinosaurs. Um. Let's go. Two counters on a creature. Destroy each creature power two or less. Black, black, boom. Crew the chariot. Do I want to gain four? I probably want to gain four. Yeah, so I'm just going to kill, crew the chariot like this. And then attack Nyssa. And make a dinosaur while I'm at it. Mm-hmm. Ba-boom! Was that good? I think that was good. And also next turn, guess what? All my dinosaurs gain double strike and trample. Okay, yeah, Gix's command was a good sideboard. I, I'm really happy about that. <laughs> this 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 is tough. If he kills the, the, the Larcenist and he gets Dracosaur into play, he's got a lot of life. But he has to kill the, the, the Larcenist this turn or he's dead. It's also a 4-5. How is he killing this thing? He's red-green. There's no way. And... Uh, Next turn, my dinosaurs get double strike. I get to crew the chariot with the larcenist and attack for a million. Boom! We got the match. We 2 won. Oh, we won the draft. Insane sweat, as always. These guys put up a really tough fight. We won 5-4. Mac lost. He went 2-1. I went 2-1. Troll won his last round to go 1-2. That gives us the victory. Super pumped. And uh, you know what? Bring to Light. Bring to Light was like the MVP. Honestly, like... Bring to Light Valky was just so good. And this deck, I love decks like this. I I think this deck could have used a trop pretty badly, but you know what? This deck really had some good stuff going on. A little dicey on the mana, never even time twistered, but good threes and fours. Could have used a one also. That actually would have been a thing, like a birds or anything like that. The Shinobi was awesome. The Bring to Light was awesome. The sideboard of Gix's Command was great. And uh, that racks up another dub. Thanks for watching. Appreciate you hanging out as uh, we really demonstrate how good Broadside Bombardiers is and kind of lock, bring to light Balky in the cube for at least at least a good while longer. I'll be back tomorrow. We're going to be switching up with uh, Markov Manor drafts, MKM, the new set, whatever, uh, and cube, but still cube because I love cube. It's my favorite format in the entire world. All right. I'll be back tomorrow and I hope to see you there. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. It helps out the channel and you won't miss a single draft.